Welcome, Collider fans, to Sunday's edition of Collider Mailbag, where we answer your questions here on the show. As always, I well, not as always, but for this week, I am one of your hosts, John Roca, uh, joined by one of the most amazingly talented, brilliant writers that I've ever had the privilege to know and read, the venerable Mark Riley. Thank you. Yes, I do deserve an Oscar nomination for my movie talk notes. Um, <laughs> they come quite natural. They, you are Thank natural. You, you are kidding. natural. What you're doing. Thanks so much. Glad to be here, as always, on Mailbag on a Sunday. It's Sunday. Sunday. Let's I, do this. I just had pancakes. And as right. always, uh, joining us, the amazing Sinead DeBreeze. Hello, guys. Um, I just had a blue raspberry lollipop, so I'm a little blue. Just in case you're wondering, I'm not dying of the bubonic plague. A bubonic plague. Oh, dude, I'm not dead. <laughs> It's is that, just right? a blue tongue. It's, it's it was right. just a lollipop. <laughs> a lollipop. It was just a lollipop. I can get up and walk. Well, I'm sorry, Sinead, but a rat licked the lollipop before you did. You know, oh boy. Break. All right. So, already off the rails, and I like right, it. Right. All right, let's go to the first question, please, Sinead. All right. Terry writes, Terry here. Quick question. What's <laughs> <laughs> up, Terry? Quick question. What is your favorite or most surprising twist in a movie? My most surprising twist is the crying games. She's a he. This is, uh, this is such a good question and incredibly tough to answer because my first answer immediately is when you find out that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father in Empire Strikes Back. This was before you could go on the internet and have spoiler stuff like nobody knew. Even people on the set, if you read the behind the scenes stuff on that shooting of the movie, didn't know he was going to say that. So to me, that qualifies as maybe one of the greatest twists ever. And the second being that on Planet of the Apes, that it was actually, they were actually on Earth, which was so great. And you didn't see that coming at all. Such a fantastic film. Uh, Mark, what about you? Oh, I love those. Great calls. Yeah, I, I was totally thinking about Vader. Um, I yeah. forget it's a big twist. Yeah, you, you, you do forget Because right. now it's, it's just kind of, it's part of the lexicon of right. the conversation that we always knew that. Um, I always think uh, the big twist for me was the reveal that it was actually a shark and not a serial killer in Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> nice. Right it. off the you bat. There it, it is, Sinead. Right right this is, off the by bat. the way, this is going to be a thing, everyone. So <laughs> strap yourself in. Every week, I'm going to work jaws into the conversation. Hello. All right, moving on. Um, yes. Usual suspects. Oh, yes. Fantastic twist for me. Right. Kaiser Sose revealed to be, spoiler alert, anyone? Anyone? Seen the movie? No? No? Yes, Kevin Spacey's character, yeah. Kaiser Sose, from his reveal to like, how he made up a story by looking around the room and yeah. grabbing the little the the items in the room to then the walk that mm -hmm. slowly morphed. It was a fan of the music, the directing, the shots, the acting. It was fantastic. I love that. So now, what about a uh, Fight Club or Sixth Sense? Were those Fight Club, I would say, is another one. I'd right. go. I, I think a lot. I mean, I was going to go away from Sixth Sense because yeah, it's so obvious. It's kind of everybody brings up Sixth Sense, right. which is it's a fantastic twist. I love it. Uh, Fight Club, though, is probably up there for me as well what the twist um and if you go back and watch this movie which we did it was on tv uh, yeah. a few weeks ago you can see the nuggets of he's telling you fincher is telling you yeah that it's uh, uh, another personality uh, made up by Edward Norton's character. Yeah. You can see the flashes. He appears. He, you can you can pick up little things. It's so fantastic. Yeah. What about you, Shane? Do you have a twist that you? Well, I mean, I can't remember the last time I was truly surprised wow. by a, a movie, mostly because um, nowadays everything is on the internet, like you guys mm -hmm. said. Yeah. So everything gets spoiled, and especially working in the business mm. that we do. I mean, you guys most of the time spoil everything for me. But it's all right. I'm not like bitter <laughs> about it or anything like that. No. Um, but I, my favorite surprises or the ones that I really enjoy the most always come from horror movies. Mm. Just because I'm not a huge horror fan. Right. But that's a way for me to get my excitement up. I love being like thrown for a loop. The ones that come to my mind uh, besides The Sixth Sense would be like, Saw, um, mm, yeah, it, it, like the fact that Jigsaw is the the body from the beginning. That's a good one. Mm, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I didn't see that one coming. Um, Scream, like yeah. the, the iconic ones that stick out to me, where it's like your villain is way closer than you expect. Those right. are the ones that I always remember. Love mm. those. Scream's a great one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such a good question. All right, what, what do we have next? Jay writes. There is a new report that. Fantastic Four, or about Fantastic Four going back to Marvel. Can you explain it to me? I don't believe the rumors. Yeah, this, I mean, this is a rumor uh, to be sure right now. The only, I did some research on this. The only article I could find was Movie Pilot. Uh, they did an article that there are rumors. I didn't 
see any source. I think it's just a lot of speculation. Movie Pilot then turned it into a, a speculatory article mm-hmm. uh, about could it happen. So there, it's just rumors right now, and I think it all stems from the fact that the Fantastic Four, uh, Josh Trank's version tanked, mm-hmm. wasn't good. So looking at what Sony did with Spider-Man, now there's this talk that maybe Fantastic Four can go back to Marvel. Marvel then, there is actual news that they made deals to get some of their characters back. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe they were able to get, um, in addition to getting like Luke Cage back mm-hmm. and Punisher back, there was speculation that they could also get like Silver Surfer maybe. Oh, wow. or So look, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's it, It's looking like maybe, I bet there's conversations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is just speculation. So there are rumors for now. So to explain it, the best I can do is that there's probably spec, uh, my speculation is that they're talking about it because what are they going to do with it? They have tried now three movies and they haven't made a decent Fantastic Four in yeah. any of them. What about this? Would you guys want to see Marvel get it back? And would you want to see it rebooted? Maybe Absolutely. not anytime soon. Like for right. me, I feel like I, I would like to see it because yeah. I feel like it deserves something but i wouldn't want to see it for a few years yeah at least five at least five and you'd have to recast obviously i think you'd have to recast as 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 progressive as the as that casting for that version was yeah i still think you'd have to revisit it and recast it in a certain extent and i think there will be other actors that will step up in the future that we don't see coming maybe or just building their resumes now that might step up and have the and have the right stuff to play those characters really really well for a reboot Uh, and i don't even want to call it a reboot if it goes to marvel to me it would be their first attempt at doing it you know what I'm saying and so I wouldn't even consider it a reboot so I would absolutely love to see their points of view because to me everything they do is I'm in such a support of the casting of uh, of Amber I'm sorry uh, Brie Larson as Captain Marvel such a great choice right you find these the right actors the right actresses with the weight and the gravitas to bring levels to a character like a superhero character and that's what people gravitate to and enjoy it, yes, they have superhero powers. It's about them as people. That's what keeps us coming to watch the films. Yeah, it's it's Marvel's first family. Yeah. That, that that's a it's a family element. Yep. And I always think to how the Incredibles came mm-hmm. out, and was it, the Fantastic Four producers at the time were like, Whoa. and yeah. they did. From what I understand, they did some reshoots because that the Incredibles did it right. Yeah. They yeah. really did the family dynamic, and so. It, it then people looked at the Fantastic Four movies by Tim Story and they just didn't land and mm-hmm. then the reboot happened and we know how that went. So Marvel has a proven track record. Yeah. We say it every day on the show. They know what they're doing. They started their production company by getting a $500 million loan and taking a chance on John Favreau and Robert Downey Jr. and created Iron Man and the Marvel uh, MCU as we know it today. So yeah. they know what they're doing. They could do Fantastic Four, and I bet they would do it well. So I want it. Yeah, nice. What's our next question? Nathaniel writes, hey, Collider, would you be interested in seeing uh, the Force Awakens style reinvention of The Matrix, where we have the original trio return, but phase them out in order to tell a new story? The franchise is such a goldmine, and it's a shame nothing further is being done with it. Just don't remake it. Thanks. Uh, Here's my opinion. No, I don't want that at all. I... Keanu is kicking butt in John Wick, so you can still bring him back. You could make him the Morpheus character in a way Ooh. and have him bring in someone new. That I would be a fan of, or that I could get behind if you find the right actor. We see this happening with Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling in Blade Runner. This Obviously, Keanu is not as, as old as Harrison Ford, but he's up there. And so it's certainly possible to bring a young protege, teach him. And plus, you take advantage of it. the technology from 1997 or 6, whenever. 90, uh, or in 99. 98, 99. The 99. first one, yeah. Just, just in the last 17 years since that film came out, the technology it leaps and bounds. And so you'd have to have someone who's younger, who's on top of it, who's plugged in, for lack of a better term, uh, into what's happening in the technology and in uh, the, all the stuff that's going on with the computers and the, all that, you, you'd you have to find the right person that would convey that. I mean, Ben Wishaw in in the, the Bond movies is fantastic as mm. Q. You find some American version of that, then you can make it work, I think. And that's the that's the kind of reinvention I would rather see. What about you? So, so you would want a sequel, essentially, maybe. Essentially, yeah, possible, but sequel with slash Neo. reboot. Sequel slash reboot with Neo. Yeah, yeah then I'm all for this. To, yeah. to think about it through the prism of The Force Awakens. Let's, let's, that's where I'm going with this. Because you, you brought in J.J. Abrams. You did bring back some of the original cast members. And you used them sparingly to set up the new characters. Mm-hmm. So, But I like what you're saying. I think you could essentially it, not call it a remake or a reboot. But just pick up with a Morpheus 
Neo. Yeah. Like he's the mentor. And where do you go now? You, you made a great point. The technology where we're at right now, especially the new levels of technology yeah. in our society, wouldn't that be fascinating to explore in a new Matrix movie? Right. I think it's perfect. I don't know why they haven't done it. Yeah. I would love to see a Matrix movie that brings back just the original, that that magic of the original. Mm -hmm. You can maybe ignore the, the other two, but just kind of tell a new story where, you know, the Matrix is, uh, Matrix is still around and, and, and Neo visits our new hero or mm -hmm. heroine and says good point yeah you know i and i picture a heroine yeah you know that's, we're, a great we're, point, that's where we're going mm -hmm. nowadays he visits and says do you know what the matrix is oh my god i've heard the legend right. going force awakens i've heard the legend of the matrix that's great. what do you mean red or blue pill boom you go right it could be it, it could work i don't know if you uh, bring back the Wachowski siblings. I, I, I don't know if you do that because they haven't had a great track record. However, they yeah. are the creators of this. So maybe they come on as producers yeah. and you get a fantastic director that could come in and breathe some new life and it gets some new cast members in there. I think it could totally work. I think it box office blockbuster. Mm -hmm. I would be their opening night. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and you would fix the problems from the last two movies. Yeah. This whole idea of it being a cycle that just keeps repeating. Oh, so great. So I just watched the cycle for three movies. There's nothing really groundbreaking here right. in, in the end. I yeah. mean, obviously technology and all that, the films it's themselves were groundbreaking, but the storyline really wasn't. And you can fix that somehow yeah. and make it understandable even to the layman who comes to watch these kinds of films. That That's a great point too, yeah. because they seem to paint themselves in a corner with those last two movies. I yeah. would love to get some resolution because I don't know what the hell happened at the end of that thing. <laughs> That's right. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. What do we have next? Majid writes, hi guys, been following since for your consideration and in 2014, Movie Talk helped me get through my deployment while serving overseas. So just want to thank you for all, or thank you all for what you do. You truly make a difference out here. That's oh. awesome. Thank you, Majid, thank for your service. Now on to my question. I've noticed that most people who don't like Zack Snyder never give him credit for certain things like Ben Affleck's Batman, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, and Ezra Miller's The Flash. These were all cast by Zack, and most people who love them today hated him for it when they were first announced. It's like everything we have seen from these three has been Snyder's vision. Snyder directed that warehouse sequence, yet Affleck gets the praise for it. Snyder directed all the things we love about Wonder Woman, excluding the trailer and movie. Why do you think this is? Do people just hate him so much they can't acknowledge his wins, or are his losses so bad that those shining spots are not enough for people to praise him? All our excitement stems from things Zack Snyder has done with those characters. Why do you think that is? Great question. Mm. I have changed my tune with Zack Snyder, and I tell you, it came when I was in Hall H for the Justice League um, premiere footage, and Zack Snyder walks out to a chorus of booze. Wow. And I went, you, wow. I felt, awful and i went you know what have you made a 200 million dollar blockbuster right. no so wait i have not heard this story this yeah. is like blowing my mind yeah. people in hall h boot him people how in did, hall h boot him it how wasn't did he it, handle that it, it, he he handled it like a pro mm -hmm. he just didn't even acknowledge it he waved he took pictures he did his thing and i felt bad for the guy and it makes that's, me uncomfortable it made me mm -hmm. uncomfortable it pissed me off then and it made me look back on the comments that i have made where i've given the guy shit and i went you know what the guy is trying really hard. And look, mm -hmm. if th some of these movies haven't landed, I do think that constructively, Zack Snyder relies on visuals over story. Mm -hmm. Now, d digging a little deeper, Warner Brothers is really trying to hit gold with all their movies, so I think there's a lot of noodling around in the scripts and the movies. Maybe Zack Snyder, I don't think he gets final edit. I don't think he's just gets carte blanche to do what he wants. Mm -hmm. So I think that he's been given an unfair rap because I do like the guy as a filmmaker and as a person he's the nicest guy mm -hmm. in every interview i've never met the guy but he looks like a nice person and he does care about his characters yeah. and what he's doing now with my boy superman i don't think he really gets superman he said some things that have rubbed me the wrong way but that's his opinion so he does get a bad rap, bad rap but he did cast all these mm -hmm. all these great characters he has set the tone and i love man of steel I, that's his best movie that mm -hmm. he's done for me. So it, it's just this internet culture we're in where you praise them when they're on, on top and you kick them when they're down. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think that they just keep going after him. And I think they need to take a step back and just go, you know what, let let these filmmakers, we talked about it on Movie Talk on, on uh, Friday with Wonder Woman. It's a filmmaker. They're saying it's a filmmaker run thing. That doesn't really seem to be the case. I think they need to step. I'm wondering if we pull back the veil, if Zack Snyder 
it was just left to do what he wanted to do. Yeah. Would these movies have been better? Did they noodle around in his finished product? We don't know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe give him a pass. Those are just my two cents, Roka. Yeah, this is an interesting question because it opens the portal to this idea of having a more elevated discussion that has more layers to it than just, it sucks, or it's, I loved it. You know, you have to explore the complexities of a question like this. Okay, for me personally, I don't, I'm not, I've said this on the show, on on other shows, I am not a big fan of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, and Ezra Miller's Flash, I'm still out on because he only had, what, like five minutes of screen time? I can't make a judgment yet. You know, when Grant Gustin's my boy, and that's a really hard thing to let go of because I I love him on the flash yeah and so to me but i do take the point here ben affleck's batman was great uh, I, I like uh, riley i echo the love for man of steel absolutely love man of steel it was such an interestingly new take that makes sense for what he was trying to do now did he go too far in Superman members of batman yes absolutely made him too dour it didn't give him enough for us to gravitate to and enjoy because you got to have the balance so i think snyder gets pilloried for the stuff that he rightfully should get pilloried for but majeev you make a great point he doesn't get enough credit for the stuff he should get credit for and that has to balance the scales so to explore this a little more deeply that's that's why this question is so good you're like well what about this and what about this he should get credit for that too and absolutely right and there are sequences in batman versus superman that work really really well yeah and other sequences that don't and it's just like okay so what are we talking about here and that's what um, and if you have friends who are just doing base stuff you gotta you gotta drag them up to the elevated level and have a discussion that's more complex that's what your job as a, as a guy who seems to me a very considerate guy who's put a lot of thought into this question so i appreciate your question i think more people should ask questions like this and give more layered answers because there's more to it than just there straight hated or don't like it what about you uh Sinead? what's your feeling on this um, I also really like this question because the stuff that we did hear about Batman v Superman. I mean, I, we've talked about this before, Riley. Mm-hmm. I liked Batman v Superman. Me too. I like Suicide I did. Squad. Mm-hmm. I did. Um, I just I can't, didn't like Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't hate completely on those movies. I mean, sure, I didn't think they were freaking fantastic. I wasn't like singing about it on the hills, but I mean, like, I enjoyed them. Yeah. I enjoyed them. They were entertaining. And people just sometimes, in my opinion, take things too seriously right. um, at the end of the day there are good parts about both of those movies sure it might not be as many great parts as you wanted or expected but you have to give credit to the people who made the movie because and those little things that you enjoy so I've heard things like Batman v Superman sucked but Batman was really cool right. that's the one I think we hear the most yeah and yeah and it takes Zack Snyder to believe in Ben Affleck and give give us a good Batman. I like Ben Affleck as Batman, and so I, I'm like happy for Ben Affleck and his acting chops as Batman. But I'm also happy for the people who believed in him enough to give him the role mm-hmm. that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a great question. My whole thing with DC at this point is, I really feel like if. If I'm being 100% honest, if Wonder Woman is mediocre, one, it'll break my heart. Yeah. But I think at that point, I will then be more understanding of people who hate on DC. Right Right. now, I feel like just just relax. Like, we're still working through it. There are still Mm. different things that that we we enjoy about these movies, or at least I do. Um, So I can't I can't speak for everyone. But I think if one if we go into 2017, the way we went into 2016's DC movies, yeah. then I will understand a little bit like, all right, because I don't want yeah. mediocre films either, people. Like, I don't want to watch mediocre films. I think I think, I think everything hinges on Wonder Woman and Justice League. Yeah, I think absolutely. everything hinges on that. Once mm-hmm. after that, that, then the grace period that even the DC fans who are rabid fanboys give it like I like to me I didn't like that Mara picture that came out I to me it seemed like cosplay yeah, on an ocean a, little, a little GQ shot ball. it looked like it, yeah it looked like something out of an old Power Rangers movie mm-hmm. so to me it didn't do it so I have real trepidation walking into Justice League and right. Wonder Woman so we'll see but I'm going to go see them they're gonna get my money it's a matter yeah. of like will I enjoy it I don't know I hope I do and maybe that's what we end up seeing but either way it'll be a more layered conversation all right what's yeah. our next question Ali writes you've been making every day more entertaining for me for about a year and a half Maybe this is just me being overly political. I do work in politics. There you go. <laughs> but when do studios decide it's Thank you, Trump. the quote <laughs> the quote right time to make a movie like Patriots Day? Since it is the retelling of a real event that happened not long ago at all, the studio and writer must have been on this at least two years ago, aka at least one year after it happened. I have no problem with movies like this, but when does the studio decide that major, horrific, real events are touchable in the movie sense? Peace out, Mother Fs, but not really. I love you guys. (laughs) 
<laughs> this guy is great. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, so let me answer Ali's question the only way I know how. I really think the studios do tracking on this kind of stuff before they go forward with it. I don't think you, the, the last thing these multi billion dollar corporations want to do is massive missteps that offend the American audience, uh, especially with something like Patriot's Day, which is about the bombing, the Boston Marathon bombing that occurred a couple of years ago and the subsequent uh, pursuing of the suspects, I believe. And yeah. so I saw the trailer for this uh, before Deepwater Horizon. I was so moved and so like looking forward to seeing the film. Not excited, that's not the right word moved, drawn to it. It seemed like they approached it with the right gravitas that you need to for a film like this. And I felt like they were having, they understood the subject matter. Like you saw in United 93. If you haven't seen United 93, that film will devastate you and break you in half. I thought World Trade Center was a very good attempt by Oliver Stone to explore that stuff with the relationship between Michael Payne and Nicolas Cage and Maggie Gyllenhaal. There was so much in Maria Bello. There was so much there. So the films, I think they do the tracking. I think they explore it. I think they have their focus groups. And I think they have like, they do little scripts that they, like little, I don't know, snippets of the script they probably released to see how people feel about it synopsis those kinds of things and that's what they do so to me I think they do all this research before they even start shooting a frame of these films because they know they don't want to turn the audience against them what about you Mark that's a great point uh you're right. I think they do a lot of tracking and, and mm. you know, you can tell if it's too soon, if it's really rushed yes. to production. Mm -hmm. And if you look at maybe the writers and the, and the filmmakers behind it and the, I mean, if they, if Patriot's day came out a year later, yeah. that's, that's a rush job. Yep. And you know, with this, we have Peter Berg who is a fantastic filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm blanking on his, um, last survivor. Last oh, yeah. Survivor. Lone Survivor. Lone, or Lone, Lone Survivor, Survivor. Right, thank right. you. Lone Survivor is one of those movies that ripped me to pieces. Mm -hmm. And that that's a, a true story as well. Um, we probably didn't get any intel on that, you mm -hmm. know, until after, way after the fact. But so with Patriot's Day, yeah, I look at how it's been a, a little bit of time mm -hmm. and the, the filmmakers behind it with Peter Berg also writing part of the screenplay yeah. with, uh, I believe, Matt Cook. And they're taking some care with this. You get... And, and I look at the casting of Mark Wahlberg, who is a yeah. Boston native. Yep. So it's it's a it's a genius casting. Not mm -hmm. only is Matt uh, Matt Mark Wahlberg um, a fantastic actor, but he represents Boston. And yeah. so you look at that. There's a lot of care in that. So I, I really feel like they're they're not rushing, and it wasn't too soon to do it. Same same goes. God, United ninety three. Yeah. Whew, that that thing ended, and the uh, just, including me, the audience sat silent. Yeah. And they had. And again, they did this special weekend where all proceeds went to 9-11 victims. And right. I remember making a point to go see it. Yep. To, to I'm like, here's my contribution because yes. I don't know what else to do. Right. So, yeah, I, I, I think the, the tracking is probably the best example. I think you're, you're absolutely right. You make a great point, though, uh, Mark, to use Mark Wahlberg. If you're not going to get Matt Damon, you got to get Mark Wahlberg. There's that kind of feeling that yeah. they are from that community and they bring an everyday, everyday man type of vibe to it that you can gravitate to and follow as a protagonist through the film. Yeah. And you definitely get that vibe with Wahlberg in this film. And like in Deepwater Horizon, if you haven't seen Deepwater Horizon, go see this film. It's one of Wahlberg's best work. And you see when you see the trailer that he's bringing that same kind of power to the role that he's going to do here in the film. Uh, all right, what's the next thing? Christopher writes, what's up, Collider crew? Christopher Woodburn here. I'm a huge fan of you great people, and my question is, many times you all rag on the prequels for Star Wars, and with good reason. But for me personally, I think that Revenge of the Sith is a pretty good film, which was highlighted by Anakin and Obi-Wan's lightsaber battle. Why do you think people still talk bad about the prequels? Thank you for all of, your, all of the hard work, and keep bringing the filthy. Yeah, that's, that's a good, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, look, let's go back to our time on Far, Far Away. Sure. Um, <laughs> we started to, I, I turned personally, uh, I, I listened to a fantastic podcast for center with Joseph Scrimshaw and Ken Knapsack yeah. and they, he, Scrimshaw came in and started defending the prequels and man, if that didn't really turn me around somewhat. Yeah. And then I started to really think about it. I started to watch them again when they're on TV and then revisiting them with my girlfriend who hadn't seen the prequels, but saw the original trilogy leading up to force mm -hmm. awakens. And I changed my tune. I did. I can change my mind. I did rag on them. I don't think they're great. Mm -hmm. I don't. But I have a very big appreciation for them. Yeah. Um, I do enjoy the story on paper. I think the story is very well thought out, and I think it's it's it has a lot of meat to it. But the execution sucks. So as far as people ragging on the prequels, mm -hmm. I, I I just think it's something that people are continuing to do. Yeah. 
I don't I don't want to say it's the cool thing to do. Um, sometimes I feel like it can be a Star Wars elitist thing. Yeah. But you have to remember that there are people that look at the prequels that grew up with the prequels and they look at the prequels over the original trilogy and yeah. love those movies. So for me, I have decided not to rag on the prequels anymore. Mm -hmm. I will construct it and say, yeah, they didn't hit the mark for me. Revenge of the Sith got close. Mm -hmm. It is a, a damn good movie. It just, I wanted a little bit more to it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Roka, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, wearing a Star Wars shirt. I yeah. think uh, from my, from my uh, point of view, um, I still think they're not that great a film, but you can, films, series of films, but you can make a defense for them. And like you said, with Scrimshaw, like I, I went on Jedi Alliance with them one time and did a uh, watch along for Attack oh, of the Clones. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and I really enjoyed my time because Joseph was able to explain some of the things that were happening here. And you find yourself kind of turning a little bit. And it's not that they're good, look, the, I, the, that the prequel trilogy, they're not a good set of films. I will absolutely say that for storyline reasons, for some of the acting, obviously, some of the uh, um, uh, what we, the aloofness of the inability for the audience to gravitate and connect with characters like we did with the original trilogy. I don't think that's there. Yeah. I think you, you don't connect with Anakin like you do if you watch him in Clone Wars. That's an Anakin you can connect to. And I think that's what's missing from these prequel trilogies. I think that's why people put them down. Uh, do, should they be just blanketly uh, brushed away and shoved into the corner? No. I think there's a lot that happens, especially in Revenge of the Sith, that is worth mentioning, worth talking about, worth talking about its value, and it does have, uh, it is canon, so there's nothing, you can, so these people can complain all they want, it's canon, and, yeah. and you know, they've made some missteps, and yeah, they're going to do that, Lucas was going to do that, but you know, they kind of take it from him, they're moving forward, and that's the way it goes, but it doesn't mean there's not stuff to mine here that you could still enjoy, and come back to watch years later, and go like, oh, I get it, or oh, without that hype of expectation that you had, if you can remove yourself from that, that experience, you can actually watch these with different eyes, and see if maybe there's something of value for you to retain that you didn't see the first time around, or the first few times around. Yeah. Uh, did you watch any of the prequel trilogies, uh, Shanae? Is that not you, Jam? Oh, my sister asked me to watch it with her. <laughs> um, I actually hadn't seen any of them okay. at all, but my sister asked me to watch it with them. Um, didn't like it. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's fair. Like, literally, that's, okay. that's, that's all right too. I didn't watch all of them. I, I didn't. What I saw of it didn't like it. Yeah. Um, she's like, she loves Hayden Christensen. Mm. We were huge fans of him mm -hmm. yeah. when we were younger and like life is a house. So yeah. Was yeah, the good best film. ever. Um, and then you watch the prequels and I'm like, mm. Right. So I don't know. I have, I, I have like, so the acting is the thing. That's what takes you out it's of just, it. Yeah. It's yeah. so for me, I did, it was so not real. Like right. I know it's not realistic, but you know what I mean. Like it's just so cheesy. It's I think way yeah. too he over had, the top. He had stronger actors in the original trilogy to push back from the wooden dialogue and the wooden direction he sometimes could give, yeah. which Harrison has talked about in numerous interviews. I don't think Hayden, Natalie, and the other actors pushed back hard enough against George to make him. I mean, Ewan is the only one that really comes out of there unscathed yeah. Yeah. because of the, what he did, with, because he was a more seasoned professional actor. He was able to push back and get more out of these situations. I think the other actors suffered a little bit from not having that kind of gravitas and that kind of strength to push back. I mean, if you yeah. think about Star Wars as a whole, I mean, it's like you're, this is a totally different, out of this mm -hmm. world, you have to have actors mm -hmm. to bring that world to life. There's absolutely no way acting can be less than stellar mm -hmm. in a movie like Star Wars. Yeah, yeah and they were really too, uh, they were put, you know, you have to act in front of a green screen right. with a tennis ball on a stick. Very yeah. good point. You know, yeah. and they yeah. just kept doing that and that's, that was my critique mm -hmm. with the, the prequels is that it was the over-reliance on technology yeah. rather yeah. than, and I know they had a lot of practical effects, it, it is right. on record, but there was that thing and I'll end this with my favorite story with my girlfriend when we were watching Phantom Menace when Jar Jar came on. Yeah. There was this moment she went, Look at this asshole. And I just, I lost it. <laughs> lost it. So that was one of my favorites. <laughs> What's our next one? All right, Emil writes, I know it wouldn't make sense for the Defenders to be a part of Infinity War, just like it wouldn't make sense for the Avengers to show up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But do you think that they will at least reference the Defenders in some way in Avengers 3 or 4, just to make it clear for people that it's really all connected? I think it would be a wasted opportunity to not do it. Thanks for taking my question. Hmm. I, I like this question. It's a good uh, because we see this happening now on the Netflix on Netflix. I keep saying I always do that. The Netflix on Netflix. Uh, you see these series coming in and they're really like Luke Cage is 
fantastic. Jessica Jones was good. I thought there were some, I thought it was three episodes too long, but Daredevil's never let me down. It's so fantastic. So you have these things being laid, having this groundwork laid here. Do you think it would, do I think it would transfer? Sure. I, I think it does work because they did do that with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and they did, and they actually saved the show in a way by making it part of Captain America. So it's like, okay, what can you do here with the Defenders? I think it, it's interesting because all of it is Infinity War out there. It doesn't mean that Infinity War won't touch Earth 2. So mm -hmm. it's certainly possible to have the more of a ground force of superheroes who don't have the power to fly but you've we've seen it in multiple comic books where they take them with them on the spaceships and do whatever daredevil has gone out in space yeah. you know all these luke cage all these guys iron fist all of them have gone out in space and done stuff uh so it, it's still possible for them to work and i think if you establish the tv universe strongly enough then you can have them cross over in a way that's believable acceptable and fun they haven't said they're in they haven't said they're a hundred percent individual universes yet and so right. i think it's certainly possible to cross over yeah what about you Mark? um i mean i think that if we're talking a mention yeah <clears throat> then i think or a reference i think that they should mm -hmm. i think it you know they do it in these series on yeah. these netflix series you know in daredevil i remember yes they you know they're like hey we're not talking about a guy with a hammer here right. you know they make little comments so it could it, it could be interesting to see our Avengers maybe somewhere, maybe on Avengers Tower or Tony mm -hmm. Stark's Tower, where, you know, there's something happening and they go, you know, hey, should we should we bring in Daredevil for this? Or right. like, should we or ask, Luke. you know, because yeah. as we now know with Civil War, Tony Stark was tracking Spider-Man. Yeah. So, which I loved, by the way. So yeah. wouldn't it make sense that Tony Stark is aware of some of the defenders? So a passing mention can work. It's hard. We've had a lot of conversations with this on, you know, news and, and the mm. uh, the Russo brothers kind of talking around it yeah. on whether or not they're going to be in it and the different tones and how they might go like this. So maybe just a passing reference would give those fans like, ah, it's all in the same universe. Cool. Right. Right. I don't know if they can show up or not. Personally, I think there are ways you can make it work. Yeah. I don't know how, but I, 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 I would like to see it. Just maybe a reference, that'd be cool. It's certainly a challenge because you have Guardians of the Galaxy slime, slamming, in, slamming in there with their group, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you have already the Avengers set up, both sides of the Avengers set up, yeah. Yeah. and if you want to throw in another crew of people, you have to... You'd have to make this thing over. Obviously, they're making it over two movies. You'd have to make the storylines really, really work. That would be effective and believable. Yeah. That they would be going down to Earth and they would have something to do with it. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, what, do you have any feelings on this question? Um, I mean. I just, I don't want to see the crossover at mm, all. I've okay. always, I mean, I've always said that. I think that the tones of the Netflix Marvel shows are so different than the movies. It just doesn't make sense for me. Um, I don't, I can't imagine the Defender showing up in Infinity War because the Marvel, the MCU is so like glossy and like, you know, it's just a totally different look yeah. versus the movies versus, and I just finished Luke Cage and I will 100% stand by that even more than I did before. Mm. Because I, I just think the look of it is so different. Yeah, the grittier. I just can't, yeah. yeah, it's just like I can't picture one of those characters. I feel like it would stick out like a sore thumb. Also, I don't think that the movie should be oversaturated with tons of characters, yeah. too. It just, I agree. It scares yeah. me a little bit because the last um, Avengers, I mean, we got so much. And mm. I like it, but, like, it's fine. And also, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I mean, you guys know how obsessed I am with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I 100% when they make references to the MCU and Agents of Shield find it really cheesy. Oh wow. I find it really lame. Like they they do it all mm. the time in the in the TV show and like it's funny to me and like I appreciate it because I know what they're talking about. Yeah. So I'm like, "Oh cool." <laughs> but that's it. Like okay. I'm like, "All right, enough." It just is weird to me. So I I think that Leave it alone. We know that the Defenders are part of Marvel, you guys. Everyone knows that. So yeah. I just think that we shouldn't we shouldn't touch them. And plus, I feel like that allows the the Netflix Marvel universe to be its own thing, and then they can grow in their own direction. Yeah. Because the one, the second you cross them over with the MCU, then you have to stick to that storyline that you had in Avengers, and it has to become part of that. But like, you have four fresh characters on on Netflix that don't necessarily get a lot of attention mm -hmm. now that we have the MCU. So this allows them to kind of take their defenders a whole new way, make it dark. It's super violent, super gory compared yeah. to what we see in the MCU. So I just, I want them to not touch it. Yeah, Sinead had a lot to say on that one. That's Absolutely. a great yeah, yeah. point kind of, too. Really encapsulated it all. Drop all right. that mic. Yeah, I know, Sinead, really. Just drop pick it. it up and drop um, it. I don't know, like my obsession with, um, with all of this like Netflix stuff has grown exponentially in the mm. last like four months. And yeah. I'm also like, 
the poster child for Agents of Shield. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah, someday just, we'll have to have I that discussion. Watching. Maybe I'll let you convince me to watch that show again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I bad. Know. It's pretty good. This season's pretty good. I've heard it's gotten better. Is no, Chloe Bennett gotten better? Is Chloe Bennett still trying to act in that show? All right, so let's uh, let's do the next question. <laughs> All right, Shmoes Collide. We're going to talk about this later. <laughs> yeah, we Shmoes <laughs> Collide writes, Hello, Glider. I hope your day is going well. One of my most anticipated movies for 2017 is John Wick, Chapter 2. And I'm super thrilled to hear they are already developing a third film. My question is, how much longer do you think it will be before they introduce us to brand new assassin characters that they can spin off into their standalone movies? I would love to see one focusing around Defoe or Palicki's character had they survived the first film. Would love to hear your thoughts and bring on the filthy. Yeah, uh, Defoe was, mm. okay, I mean, come on. But yeah, he's not he's around. Dead. He's dead. <laughs> so, Spoiler. Yeah, uh, but in this case with John Wick, having not seen John Wick Chapter mm. 2 yet, there I don't know if there's a character that's going to step out and become like a favorite mm-hmm. beyond John Wick. So it's hard to tell if they're going to spin something off because we just don't know yet but i mean if john wick chapter 2 blows us away it looks fantastic yeah. i love the first movie it's mm-hmm. so fantastic it's yeah. so if the if something maybe lawrence fishburne's character i don't know this is just mm. pure speculation cuz he's just in it and he's lawrence fishburne so right. if he just if something happens or or if the maybe the continental um yeah if there's something that kind of sprouts out from like he's going to be in rome so there's a syndicate of assassins there maybe you could spin off the syndicate of assassins mm-hmm. into a movie and not necessarily a character. It's hard to tell right now until we see the actual movie come out. And if somebody ta- you know, steps up and he's like, wow, this guy's a badass. Let's spin this off. But yeah. I think we're going to get John Wick chapter three and maybe even chapter four before we, we would see a spinoff. Yeah. So, well, I think they really did themselves a favor by creating the continental, by creating the continental, yeah. then all the assassins, you have a central place that yep. all these assassins yeah. go to. And you have someone like Ian McShane there. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the actor's name who plays the uh, front desk guy. He's fantastic in so mm-hmm. many films. Uh, and so he, that by establishing that you have yourself a place to spin off characters from. So I don't think I, I agree with Mark. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because I think they want to establish, see if the second film works first if the second film works and yes they may be developing a third film doesn't mean the second film is going to knock it out of the park if the second film works because they're expanding it once you expand you really can destroy a property which yeah is because they're going yeah. into europe they're doing this whole thing mm-hmm. they're having him have a dog like there's so much more going on here and, I, and commons coming in so it's just, there's stuff here to <laughs> like, like you could, it could be dangerous for the <laughs> overall scope of the film and I, so for me I, I would focus more on making sure two and three are good films, good solid films, then at some point spin off. But this is way too early to be talking about a spin off, yeah. in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. But you do have the vehicle there already with the Continental to allow you to spin it off. What about you, Shanae? Do you watch these? Have you seen these movies? Oh, or, yeah. John Wick? Uh, yeah? John Wick is so good. We talked <laughs> so about good. this. Like, I was waiting for a straight action movie that is what you see is what you get. And yep. I got it with John Wick. It's yeah. my favorite genre of movies. I always talk about how I just miss non complicated action movies. Yeah. That are um, good. That are good. That are good. Yeah, yeah. And yes. don't have a cape in it. No, right. and you do, like we don't need a sequel. Good thing we're getting one, but we right. don't need a sequel. Um, the Continental is what I would say. I would say I'd love to see a story based on the Continental. Mm. Like just show us how it came to be. Ooh, show us. Oh, that's good. Show us like a like a prequel, maybe. Like yeah, a prequel or like you know how it's like a different season, different assassins right. check in, and like how Ooh, it all started. That. Like you don't even need a you don't even need a character from the first or second John Wick or whatever mm-hmm. to tell us the story of the Continental because that is so original to me. It's so cool that there's like a hotel where all these assassins go. Mm-hmm. I was so intrigued. It was like the thing besides John Wick and Keanu Reeves, who I didn't really like that much until I saw John Wick. Um, I sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Stop. 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 Yeah, stop. I thought I Keanu Reeves as an actor, you even like that much? No, no, I haven't. I mean, not not in a while. Have Not you seen Bill and Ted? I mean, <laughs> Speed. Uh, Point no. Break. Then you also have all the Matrix. awful movies he was in, too, more recently. So, I you, just, so you're okay with Chloe Bennett, but Keanu Reeves is where you draw the line. I, I thought he was confused. on a downward spiral. I thought he was going downhill over the past few years. Okay. I'm not talking about way back when, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about in the past few years. I had way lost a lot when. of hope in Keanu Reeves until I saw gotcha. John Wick. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and so he was amazing in John Wick yeah. and I think that I would I just love this world I think it's great and I think that they 
the standout thing to me was this freaking hotel that's so badass mm. and so cool. And it, the name The Continental, it just sounds like a movie. Sounds bitching. How, yeah. about, it, go ahead. How about a lake house shared universe? Oh, see? You see? This is where I this is where I get this from. Did you see The Lake House? Sweetheart, I own The Lake House. I love that film. Oh, Jesus what? Lord. What? Yes, I'm I out. do. Yes, I do. You know why? Directed by a Latino, and it's it's got a Latino vibe to it. And if you're Latino, you get that film. Okay, that film well, nothing damn against Latinos, good. but yeah, it's yeah. also yeah. got an awful vibe to it. No, it it's doesn't. a terrible movie. It's it a, has one of those bad movie vibes, vibes to Not it. At yeah, all. it's like one of those movies that just like You're sucks. both crazy. You're both absolutely crazy. That film is so good. Oh, I enjoyed yes. it. I went to the premiere of that movie. I own and that film on Blu-ray. Why? I love it. What is wrong with it's you? It's even got a good soundtrack. Paul oh, McCartney. God. It's got great stuff. And she's sitting there and she like hears him whisper. And and yes. And, and I, I, Don't you know what love is? Not anymore. Romantic love. <laughs> not that practical crap you uh, do with yeah, every day. I'm talking about romantic love. From the lake yeah, house. with the with the mailbox portal <laughs> into <laughs> another universe. It's a, it's a distant long distance relationship. That's what it is. It's a long distance relationship. They, they really open it and every time it's so like dramatic because right. they put something in the mailbox and it it's goes right. to a different Oh no, you guys. Don't, yeah, come on. Don't, no, don't it's a take guilty pleasure. For it. It's a guilty pleasure that I it's, love. It's a listen, guilty oh. We accept you for your love of Transformers. Oh, we listen to we over here. And all this stuff, but I am Sorry, not. Mama Bear. I'm not getting on board with your love for the Lake House. Okay, I I'm would watch you, Transformers Tell over what, the Lake House I will any watch day. Agents of Shield with you if you watch the Lake House with me, and I will show you what's good about it. We will live stream. We will live stream. That, live stream that sounds like punishment for, for something. I mean, good who's getting Lord. punished? Both of us. <laughs> lake, oh, Lake House, man. Oh, oh, you know, but I want to do. One, I want to make one point. Here spin real off quick. of the mailbox into its own <laughs> uh, <Hey>. movie. One thing I want to say here, though, it would be interesting to see. Uh, if there are assassins under the studio that is the John Wick studio that could show up at the Continental, yeah. that would be awesome to have assassins from yeah. other movies as crossover type things. <gasps> that is there, such right? a good idea. That's right. such a good idea. Does that make up for the Lake House a little bit? Yeah, not really. It actually, no. does. No. I... Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Bullock is so good in that film. So no, precious. Well, so, God, and so there is Keanu. nothing Keanu is so good much. about Christopher the Lake House. Plummer. There is not oh, one stuff. thing that's good about it's the Lake House. Stuff. Not one thing. Here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that there is a Lake House category on the wheel for your <laughs> ultimate schmodown because that will bury Ellis. <laughs> that yes, will bury him. Finally. You gotta, yeah, bring on the Lake House. Yeah. Bring on six questions Come on. on Lake House. Paul McCartney, great song. What All right. the? <laughs> oh, dear Lord. All right, you guys. All right, let's get this <laughs> that's an excellent place to end the show. I think it's perfect. That we, I'm going to go home and cry. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much uh, for watching this today's Collider Mailbag. We, as you can tell, we had a great time and, and in a perfect way possible. Let's go around the table, see where everybody can find you. Mark. Uh, you can find me watching Lake House this weekend <laughs> at Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be on this Tuesday's Collider Nightmares. I'll oh. be on the Schmoes No Main show. And uh, I'll be back here next week on Mailbag. See you then. Sinead. All right, you guys. Uh, I'm going to do my best to talk some sense in Roca. <laughs> I promise. You're I legitimately thought you were kidding. No, like, I'm I thought not. that was a joke. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, my mind is blown, like, honestly. <laughs> okay. Anyways, you guys can find me online at Sinead DeVries and at that's Sinead.com here on Mondays hosting Glider TV Talk, on Fridays hosting Movie Talk, and hosting Mailbag over the weekend. Yeah, it's good stuff what you've got with Sinead DeVries. Let me tell you that right now. Sorry about that. Yeah, listen, guys, you can always find me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm always there, always trying to respond to people, comment back, at least like your post, if nothing else, uh, if I don't have anything to offer. Uh, but watch the Top 10 show. We just did Top 10 Assassin films, speaking of John Wick, and, we, uh, just, and we're going to do Top 10 Tom Cruise films here on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Follow, find us on the playlist. And of course, my new uh, podcast, The Cinephiles, and then uh, Super Animation Game Time, which is over at Geek and Sundry every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on their Twitch channel on their Alpha platform. Nice. In the meantime, I'm going to watch the greatest scene. Uh, you waited for me from the lake house, which is oh, so God. fantastic. I'm it's so good. Leaving. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching this week. We'll here. see you all next time. Have a great Sunday. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.